That's very kind. Now I gotta take my time thing so I can keep talking my time. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, one of the, uh, I learned early on that uh, a university president has two, largely only two functions. Uh, one is to take blame for everything that goes wrong in the university, and the second is to welcome groups of people to the campus. And um, I try to be memorable and brief, but brevity is a virtue but so rare among academics. Uh, when Dan asked me to come and welcome you, I was particularly interested because I'm so committed to the, to the activity and to the ethics of the future of the next generation, and that's what we're about here. Uh, I try to be memorable in my, organi in my introductions. I, I have a favorite quote, unfortunately, which I'm going to share with you. I love quotes, and this is by George Bernard Shaw. Uh, the quote is this, the history of humanity is increasingly a race between education and catastrophe. Let me say that again. The history of humanity is increasingly a race between education and catastrophe. My dear friends, there are very few solutions, other solutions to the problems we face in this world than education. And we're not doing real well in the world right now, and we've got to give this next generation a new set of values, a new set of skills, and that's what we're trying to do here at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Buckminster Fuller was a friend of mine. Bucky, as you know, is often claimed as being the last uh, Renaissance man. To his credit, he was twice thrown out of Harvard, uh, designed the geodesic dome, the Dimaxion car, and wrote a wonderful book called Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth. He says, we're on a spaceship here, and it's all related. We just, we lost the manual. Bucky is having dinner in my home one evening and asked to hold my six-month-old son, Benjamin. And uh, I said, well, sure, Bucky. And I pass my son. He sits there, and he's just thrilled to hold this, and this young, young lad. And, and he said, you know, it's very important to, to hold young life. You've got to hold on to young life, he says, because young life gives you confidence in the species. Not much else does. And I said to Bucky, as we're sitting there in a home after dinner and holding the child, I said, tell me, Bucky, how should I raise this young man for a different world, for a new world? And he said, it's really important that you raise young people to understand that they, they, they live on this sphere. And events around this sphere affect every other point. Nothing happens in isolation. And I said, well, how do you do that, Bucky? And he said, well, in my home, we've changed vocabulary. Uh, we, we emphasize that we live on a sphere. And I said, like how? And he said, well, for example, he said, the concepts of up and down only have meaning on a plane. You go up or you go down on a plane. But on a sphere, you only go into the center of the sphere or out away from the center of the sphere. So he said, in my home, we don't go upstairs or downstairs, we go instairs and outstairs. I confess I didn't change my vocabulary, but the young man is 37 years old today and seems to be doing just fine. Remember the quote? And the notion that it, it, indeed it is small groups of people, of good people, committed to great things that changed the world. And as Margaret Mead said, indeed, it's never happened any other way. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Dean Moore, the Dean of the College of Business, is in uh, India today. So he cannot be here, but he sends his greetings. And uh, he very much wanted to be here. And so we thank him and we thank the College of Business for being supportive of, of, the, of the forum. What I'd like to do now is introduce the project team. Those people who have been working for the last nine months. Pretty Thacker, where are you? Merch Oscar. Rose Tummy. <laughs> Gerard Farias. Yeah. 
Uh, Peter Roche, who had played a double role of being on the board advisor and the project team. And Eric Howard, who is the Executive Director of FAST ISE. <laughs> who participated long distance by Skype. And, uh, in fact, yesterday and today was the first time many of the project team members met Eric. So. Oh! And. Actually, I was saving the best to last. Uh, Guillermo Reyna is on the project team, and he has probably done more of the special things that are in this room than anybody else. For all those special things that make this a really neat place, Guillermo is the one who has done it. Guillermo. And I want to mention our two sponsors, the Collins Foundation. And Dwight Collins is here. <laughs> Dwight has supported us, supported us in many other ways. And uh, it's great to have him here. He came in from California. And Sanofi Aventis. And they. <laughs> They not only supplied us with money, they supplied us with our keynote, leading keynote speaker. So thank you for that. And now I'm going to turn the program over to Eric, who's going to tell you about the program and carry it on through the first phase for the morning. Eric Howard. As Dan, as Dan mentioned, I don't live down here in the big city. I live up in Portland, Maine. Uh, and uh, one of the wonderful things about Maine is that you go to the dump and you talk with the governor. Um, because the governor, uh, we've only got just about 1.3 million people and the governor is sort of a regular man, uh, just like everybody else. Um, I had the pleasure of going with the former governor on a couple trade missions. Uh, and uh, one of the things that he talked about um, when he was talking about leadership and change was he said there's sort of there are three important steps. First, you have to have the vision for the future. Um, the second thing is you have to have the roadmap of how to get from where you are to reach that vision of what you're looking for. And then the third important thing is convincing other people that they should follow your vision. And that, he said, is sometimes the hardest part. Um, is convincing other people that what you think is the right solution for some of the problems is what other people should be working towards. Um, as President Adams mentioned earlier, it's the small groups of people, um, the quote from Margaret Mead, that gets us from here to another place. Um, I have the pleasure of uh, working with alumni of the Fulbright Exchange Program. Um, the Fulbright Academy of Science and Technology was started um, about six or seven years ago. Uh, by a small group of alumni. The Fulbright program was started by Senator Fulbright from Arkansas, and he had this vision of, um, let's see if we can get a small group of smart people to go from one country to another, um, because uh, you don't bomb your friends. And this was his idea at the end of the Second World War. Um, and that small idea now has 300,000 alumni around the world. There are about 7,000 new grantees every year some in coming from other parts of the world to the United States and Americans going abroad. Um, in terms of the planning team that Dan just introduced, um, there's uh, two things he didn't mention about the team. Uh, first, I just want to mention that it was very um, multinational, um, coming from several different countries. It wasn't just people from the United States. We had representatives from, I think, four or five countries on the team. Uh, and it was also uh, very multi-sectoral. Uh, just as the people in this room, um, there were people from the academic community, there were people from the business world, um, there were people from the nonprofit community, and other sectors. Um, just so that you know um, who's here, um, I'd like.